The guys at Pawn Stars seem to know it all. With three generations in the business, they've learned the nuances of the trade. Rick Harrison has made a pretty penny as the owner of the world-famous gold and silver pawn shop in the Las Vegas trip. He and his team have become experts at spotting fake merchandise and even undercutting unsuspecting customers. They've even scammed sellers who have not done the research numerous times. However, they've also been scammed on numerous occasions which has resulted in massive losses for the pawn shop. In this video, we look at the times when the Harrisons got scammed. Cubic Zirconias Diamonds have been a huge liability for the guys at Pawn Stars. Let's rewind a decade ago to the dawn of Cubic Zirconias. The late, great Richard, the old man, Harrison said the fake diamonds have swindled him the most. During the late 70s and early 80s, many pawn shops were duped thanks to the synthetic diamond doppelganger. Harrison too fell for the trap and was hit hard. He ended up losing $30,000 for cubic zirconias. It wasn't his fault and he certainly wasn't the only one, but at the time, that was a massive amount to lose. Thankfully, the next generation of pawn stars have been trained on how to tell the difference between a real diamond and a wannabe. Joe Jackson's autograph, like father, like son. Here's another blunder that caused the iconic pawn shop to lose a massive sum of money. Shoeless Joe Jackson was one of baseball greats and therefore memorabilia concerning him often fetched a pretty penny. One seller brought in a book titled, Say It Ain't So Joe, which he believed was signed by the player. Rick was so excited that he pretty much conned himself into buying it. Jackson's signature is one of the rarest out there since he couldn't read or write. Despite this, Rick bought it anyway and paid a handsome $13,000 without much verification. When experts were calling to verify the authenticity of the autograph, they immediately confirmed that the signature was a big, fat phony. Rick got absolutely nothing from the deal and his dad, his son and Chumley all laughed at him for falling for one of the oldest tricks in the book. Fake Rolexes It seems like every generation of porn stars has blundered deals while Rick made the silly mistake of getting too excited and jumping on a deal for an autograph that he thought was authentic, Rick's son Corey made a similar rookie mistake. Now, Corey grew up at the shop where his dad worked and during his early years, he made a lot of mistakes. He began working the night shift at just 18 years old. Armed with his youthful self-confidence, Corey managed to buy up not one, not two, but six fake Rolexes in a single week. Surprisingly, no one warned him to check the authenticity of the watches after the first blunder. His mistake ended up costing the business $4,000. Thankfully, as the years rolled by, Corey gained plenty of experience and hasn't made any huge blunders. Willie May's Uniform Buying fake Rolexes isn't the only blunder that Corey made on Pawn Stars. In a 2012 episode called Free Willie, Corey made a blunder of forking over $31,000 for what he believed was a game-worn Willie Mays San Francisco Giants uniform from 1961. Mays is often considered one of the most talented baseball players of all time. He played almost his entire 22-season career with the Giants finishing with 660 career home runs. The red flags with this one were apparent from the start. For starters, the uniform was in pristine condition. Chumley even pointed out that the jersey did not look game-worn. Besides, the seller did not have any identification documents and stated that the jersey was a family heirloom and did not require any identification documents. Despite Chomley's warnings, Corey went ahead with the deal. Gold and Silver soon realized their mistake, however. Not only was the jersey not worn, but it also did not belong to Willie Mays. The pawn shop eventually auctioned the jersey for $19,200 two years later, which was quite a good deal. You see, a senior uniform authenticator at Mears Hall of Shame later reported that the jersey was simply a Spalding salesman's sample of minimal value and was worth just $2,000. Nevertheless, it was a massive loss for the gold and silver pawn shop. James Bond Guitar James Bond is best known for being a spy and a lover, but a rock star? Well, in season 8 episode No Shoes, No Shirt, No Service, Rick is approached by studio musician Vic Flick. The English guitarist certainly has an impressive resume, having worked with everyone from Engelbert Humperdinck and Tom Jones to Paul McCartney, Eric Clapton and Jimmy Page. He even played guitar on numerous soundtracks for various James Bond films. Rick loves music and is a sucker for the rich history that comes with it. And since it was a vintage model, it certainly was worth a decent sum of money. However, it wasn't worth the amount of gold and silver pawn shop paid for it. The two settled for $55,000. Rick was happy to pay so much since it came with a list of songs that had been recorded with the instrument. While most of the songs weren't that interesting, one song that stood out was a James Bond theme song. Maybe that's what inspired the pawn shop owner to put a price tag of $90,000 on it. 
Unfortunately, this turned out to be a massive loss for the shop since no one cared about its history. Rick eventually managed to sell it for a measly $25,000. It had to be one of the biggest rip-offs on the show. What are your thoughts on these Pawn Star scams? Can you recall any scams from the show? Share them with us in the comments below.